right now. Cool. If you don't get them, if you don't open them in time, I'll I'll use it on mine. Got the slides, we're good. <laughs> Just gotta open them up. Welcome everyone. So Emily and Maureen, I mean, I know you have a lot so uh, of slides, um, which is totally fine, but do you want me to just like slowly go through them as you talk? Yeah, there's, we've tried to put them in a, a wee bit in order, so. Okay, I just don't want to go too fast, so. Yeah, so like the first bit of Emily's speech is about like her and her dad, so the photos at the beginning okay. are her and her dad, um, and then we go on to, um, like Emily's school life and holidays and things yeah, like that. I, I see the, the slide. The Yankees. I'm, I'm I'm afraid to <laughs> to see that, uh, but um. Anyways, I will uh, I will get us started. So, hello everyone, and welcome, welcome to the show. I feel like that's what I wanted to say. Um. So this session, I'm excited to help kind of moderate. It's on uh, juvenile Huntington's disease. And we will be hearing from Emily Lawson. Emily has a JHD. And um, we'll be hearing about kind of her experience, you know, how she learned about HD and then kind of how she was able um, to really, you know, share her story and, and make a difference. And what I also learned is that she's a gamer and I heard she was a baseball fan and I was really excited and I still am, but me being from the States and being from uh, Boston, I'm a Red Sox fan and I learned that she is a Yankees fan. So I promise to keep this appropriate. Well, there's no rivalry here. I promise Emily, but I, I am excited to hear your talk and hear your story. And I know your, your mom is sitting next to you, uh, Maureen, um, a kind of, help out as needed, but you are the pro. And so what I'm going to do is before we get started, I'm going just to share my screen. Let's see if I can do this. All right, can you see this? Yeah. All right, so before I hand it over to you, just if anyone has any questions, feel free to put it in the chat or put it in the Q&A, which is below you in the Q&A feature. Uh, Emily will be talking for, you know, about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A. So without further ado, Emily, the floor is yours. Huntington's disease has always been a part of my life. My dad was diagnosed with HD shortly before yeah, my mum fell pregnant with me. I was a bit of a surprise. And my family, the HD gene ran strongly down the male line. My dad's eldest brother had it. And my grandfather and his brother had it. In fact, as far as we know, I'm the only female in my family to have the gene. However, the good news is that the work stops here. There's all the other family members who could have it. I've been tested and don't have it. I cannot remember a time when my dad was well. I only really remember him better or in a wheelchair. Despite this fact, I had so much fun. I had a close bond with the teacher, all showing around even when he was better. He used to take me rides in his wheelchair. He used to take me to play and watch him do his hair, which was my favourite show and also his when he was away. At some point, I was only answered to name Scott. As they're one of the characters, their memories I hold. I don't want to. Unfortunately, my dad died shortly after my eighth birthday. 
and life changed so much after that the, for the good and the bad. I was lucky that I had good people training me to help me cope and be around good. This is not to say that everybody was supportive. Indeed, I became restrained from members of my own family. I feel like it is important for my own world and my own to have a positive mental attitude to me. And this, I practice this in my everyday life. After my dad died, life for the work went back to the beginning of the second marriage. My dreams were to become a, a volcologist or an astronaut or even become a and after a couple of years, my mum met her now husband too, and decided to move me to the dark side of my view, namely the east coast of Scotland. My teenage years were spent on a variety of holidays, spending time with friends and enjoying my being a bit of a teenager. By this time, my dreams were to become the next Steve Jobs or Tim Cook and have a mansion with a pool in California, but my mum was not invited. I still harbor the dream of becoming a US president, but I unfortunately came to the realization that me being born in Scotland disqualified me from winning. So quite a lot of my teenage years, my mum began to notice a change in me. I think the time that I decided to face my animal in New York, I was looking on a quad bike, did nothing to swell her thoughts that I was symptomatic of HD. My mum tried to get me support for my school kids and then she was sure I had Huntington's, but they were unsupported. And it was only when she finally moved to school mm -hmm. that she got some help. This was all done within my knowledge. I was completely overweight. One teacher, me if I had dyslexia, she recognised the symptoms of being missed by many professionals in her own life. This was an amazing moment for my mum. If someone recognised the mum, Things that my mum has been seen for something. My initial school told my mum that I would be best leaving school at the first opportunity I got as I wouldn't gain any qualifications. Despite being a new level student, he thought I didn't want to. My new school on the other hand helped me gain qualifications that enabled me to go to college, eventually gain a HMD in computing. During my first year of college, I was turning 18 and decided to get this with PhD. Enabled me to plan my future somewhat. <laughs> the testing process for me is long and gone now. What was you if at my age, but what the genetic against was going on the eyes, so I determined how was and how mad I was, so they put them away. I want to know what they know. The process was not easy. It was my first appointment, the chief priest. So that a lot of professionals know about the illness. I see that my mum should get tested despite the gene coming from my father's side. The genetic center asked me to see a psychologist to access where I was able to cope with whatever was there was there. My mum said that I denied to all sorts of other things in place to enable me not to deal with her sort. My mum knew 100% what the results be. She told me that it was, if I was positive, she was taking me on my buckler place of um, New York. You also have a writing to it for getting forward. Also a lot of roller coasters to get my adrenaline going. I also planned that till my aunt in Australia face to face my result. If she was due to come home somewhere of 2017. This would give me some time for needing to tell her. That plan right on uh, the window when my test results took, took till the beginning of April to be given to me. And my aunt said she was, she was coming on Tuesday after this. And I was given the results of my test. It was late on it. Because it finally answered a lot of questions for me. Not me understand a lot of things for my mum. It was late on the moment, sort of, because she. No longer had to fight or so he thought to help people to understand why I did the things I was doing. My other sort of this was telling my aunt and my grandparents about what that I had done this. This came out of blue for them. Because we had not saw that anybody was going through the testing process. My grand had a few swear words and lots of tears. 
Thanks for the answer to that the best I ever did. Not full of things that I want to do, I told her it's all good. Mama promised me uh, to take me to New York or something. A few weeks later, I was sitting in Yankee Stadium with my aunt and watching baseball. Sorry, it's already brought Sox fans. <laughs> <laughs> so many happy names. This is all that more than I could dream of. So many happy memories of this trip, despite where it comes in. I also got to see the Yankees. I also got to see the um, Deep Red Sox Monday. From this point on, everything about my life has been about making memories. We went to Florida six weeks after New York. I had an absolutely amazing time. I got to visit Cape Coronado, which is close, but as close to being a national as I could. I got to where the locals are that I wanted since I got when I went to Florida when I was sick. Telgrade is definitely to be recommended. I think I rode that about 10 times. There was a little girl there who was one to play there for my because she didn't do her size. This is me when I was six, crying to my mom that I couldn't go on. She wouldn't let me go on this day. So even though I was a adrenaline junkie, so even then I was a adrenaline junkie. Unfortunately, due to Lynn's my plan skydive didn't happen. Very disappointed, and my not so disappointed parents. However, I eventually managed to do a skydive over the Fife Cove in Scotland and made hunting to use the fun again. Such an amazing experience, and definitely one to show. Was being symptomatic, I've also done the edge walk in, in the CN Turf in Toronto and a bungee jump from the crane and the river guiding river. I've also tried to do something where unsuccessfully and I tried on my own with I ended up fishing around the water on my body board. No one is to say I would have way. Mostly the time goes on, you see this. Some limitations on what I can and cannot do. This is not lost on me, but I can definitely not be able to do the stuff as I want to. I get more tired than time with my Communication skills are definitely not as we used to. Oh, I've always been a worse person of few words. I chose to live my life with a positive mentality. Yes, I guess like, that's what enabled me to enjoy every day. I feel like negative and bearing views where I did. I can see. So, the brother Often, what I find is limitation in my life. For example, other thoughts and feelings of the day. One thing I can say as society, we're better at accommodating people with disabilities, but we are far from perfect. And decision on my adventures is as far as I'm concerned, there are not many things I cannot do that I need to take care of some And just a lot more fun, a lot more funny, and perhaps have some uh, adaptation. I was absolutely delighted recently when the European Space Agency announced that they were looking for applications for people with disabilities about to come and national. So my ambition is young for me not be to national. I I just have to persuade my mum that I have my care she need to come on to and that I have many things to look forward to coming here. I still have to go to from the area. I still have to go to Lombard and then hopefully see Andy Murray. I'll be visiting the Mac Hours this four days for the end of each I want to go on a cruise men during the midfield, having cocktails and just in generally experience all as much as I can. As a young adult, I now understand how my mum is over protecting me, but I definitely saw her in jokes. I definitely find it difficult to let anyone else tell me. The one place that she does feel confident in. Is the place I go to rest with Wilson Gardens. Earlier, quite early on in my diagnosis, I thought we'd get rest by go to go so we could both get rest from near each other. Imagine being in your late teens, early twenties, and spending every minute is around. Um, all of a sudden, it enables my mum to get an hour and take sleep, knowing the time being looked after. And I get to see other people's and others and others in some positions to myself. The staff there are so funny and look after me so well. You see me very little thing for Amber. 
I'm saying the one to my favorite cat. Canadian dog here, they took me. Despite the pouring of rain, they, they even enjoy eating them. Don't move on a regular basis. Uh, but the first visit to respite was a short one to get us all to get used to it. But when I came home, I asked my mum if I could go every month. Obviously, with COVID, I've not been for a while. But I cannot wait to go home. I'm not sure there will be days when there is that I can be there or not. I think that raising awareness comes to you. More people come to understand that. People tend to be a fellow person. And they do have a life to live. And this is what I intend to hear. Thank you for listening to my story. Realized I was on mute. I was like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Um, and thank you for um, also, you know, talking about the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's really cool to kind of hear your story and all the things you've been able to do to kind of take those risks and live in the moment. So it's really cool. And a lot of people are saying thanks for, for sharing your story. And, you know, people from all over the world are, are listening to you, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, one question, well, a few questions, but first one um, is, if you were able to work at Disney, what character did you or would you want to be? <laughs> Stitch. <laughs> Which one? Stitch. Not Lilo? Stitch. Yeah, no. <laughs> what about Lilo? She's not naughty enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone also asked, you know, did you find... Like, what was your thoughts on skydiving and bungee jumping? Was it was it scary? Fantastic. What was the experience? Fantastic. Which one? Fun. Which one was scarier? The bungee jump. <laughs> I've gone bungee jumping too, and I would never do it again. And I'm scared <laughs> of heights. And I remember right before I I went, there's this other group of of people, and one of the people, one of the women, this woman said, um. She, she told me, she's like, yeah, I'd rather do skydiving again if I could. And I was like, cool. Can't wait to go bungee jumping. So, <laughs> um, well, that's, that's pretty cool that you're, that you're able to do it. And um, any like tips or advice for others who are living with either Huntington's disease or, the, or juvenile Huntington's disease? Just keep a positive outlook because if you get negative thoughts in your brain, that's not good. I agree. Positive outlook. And make sure to, I think we discussed, right? Don't don't feel like you're defined by your condition, right? Yeah. Very much so. Maureen, do you have any, any thoughts or, or takeaways that you want to share? I just think the positive attitude has got to be the the main takeaway. I think that, you know, we've all only got one life and we're not guaranteed how long that's going to be. Um, and I think that if you want to take a positive from getting a Huntington's diagnosis is that you know that you need to fit everything in. You're more aware of that. Um, and I think Emily does that all the time. So obviously with COVID, that's been <laughs> curtailed somewhat. But I think having that positive attitude and thinking you can do, you know, why can't, you know, why can't Emily skydive? Why can't she do things that normal people do or healthy people do? I don't like the word normal, but healthy people do. That's, you know, there's no reason why somebody with hunting is can't do as much as somebody without it. I, I, you know, it just takes a wee bit more planning and maybe adaptations. So yeah, definitely a positive mental attitude and a good sense of humor. Yes, I remember my mom, she always kept her sense of humor um, as she dealt with HD. And I think that's what I really enjoyed. So, and I, I've already gotten some, some nice jokes from Emily 
So uh, <laughs> I, I do enjoy it. Mostly at the expense of the Yankees. <laughs> I know, I know. I, you know, I, I'll, I'll say it to everyone who missed it. Matt told me that Emily was a baseball fan and I was excited, but he didn't say which team. And then I heard Yankees and I was like, well, I'm a Red Sox person, but it's, it's all a good, good fun. So post pandemic, when it's, you know, when everything what goes back to somewhat normal, what's next on the, on the bucket list that you're hoping to accomplish? Well, hopefully we're going to go on a cruise during the magic thing. Oh, nice. A, cru- a cruise, you said? Yeah. yeah. Nice. And go and see some tennis. Yeah. Tennis? Yeah. As my dad would say, it's a real racket. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> you know, yeah. but that's, that's awesome. Nothing, yeah, nothing to adventurous. The adventure side needs to be that, like, cooled down a wee bit, I think. But if we find an adventurous thing that she can do, I'm sure she'll manage it. Yeah. But, I, I, again, it's important, right, that you're able to do what people who aren't living with uh, perhaps a health condition can, can also do, right? And I think that's what's important is being able to just adjust and adapt based off of what you're able to do. and you know, just realize that you're more to you than your health condition. I, I know I've said it yeah. before, but, you know, just learning that we have some stuff in common, baseball fans, both yeah. play video games, you know, you're, you're big into FIFA. We might, so we might have some gamers listening who, who might want to play at some point. Maybe we'll have a, maybe we'll have a gaming session or something yeah. in the future, <laughs> game, game night. I don't know, but it just goes to show, you know, that you're, capable of kind of living to the best of your ability right and I think that's that's a good reminder for all of us especially during this time where there's you know when I think of just the pandemic like you know there's a lot of unknowns and I think a lot of us can relate to those unknowns of of HD so exactly I think that's like as it gives you that you know being at home and not being able to go out into the world as much. I think it does give everybody else an experience of what it's like to have a disability and having to rely on others and make changes to your lifestyle because of an illness or it's definitely been a wake up call, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Which is em- good. Emily, any uh who would you say like a, a role model of yours is? You can pick more than one, I promise. Uh-huh. Uh, Derek Jeter. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Derek Jeter? <laughs> I like Derek Jeter, so that's that's okay in my books. <laughs> Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs? Yeah. Oh, nice. What, what's the... How come Steve Jobs? Well, I'm trying to buy Apple products. So. <laughs> oh, what'd you say? I'm trying to buy Apple products. She's surrounded by Apple products. <laughs> oh, are you? <laughs> I, I, mean, I guess... think just the determination that he had. He was also sick in that, so he also he died of pancreatic cancer or something. Yeah, and he had that determination as well. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I know we have a few more minutes left. Um, any other Emily or Maureen final thoughts or takeaways you want to share with the, our lovely audience? Thank you for listening. Yes, of course, of course. And um, thank you for... I would, I would say thank you to everybody for giving Emily the opportunity to share her story. Yeah. I think it's important for Emily that she's able to share her story Mm -hmm. and show that, you know, she is not all about Huntsman's and people with Huntsman's are also not, that's not the defining thing. Emily is still Emily. Mm -hmm. She just happens to live with juvenile Huntsman's disease. 
I totally agree. So awesome. Well, thank you again, Emily, for sharing. Um, we truly appreciate it. Um, I know we have a few minutes left, but what I will say is that, you know, we do have a few upcoming sessions. So definitely check out the agenda, check out which ones you might want to attend next. Um, I believe we have one on genetic modifiers in Huntington's disease. Um, I believe we still have perhaps either a break or a nice dance session, um, which I, I may or may not attend because I, like I like the move, I like the dance. So, but thank you again, everyone. Thank you again, Emily and Maureen. Um, I hope everyone, you know, um, enjoys the rest of their day or evening, depending on where they are. So take care everyone and we'll, we'll talk soon. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.